Hi, this is Dawn from Ninja Bunny Crochet. Today I have for us to do a summer quickie. This is a lightsaber freeze pop cozy. I made this using mo just some scraps of worsted weight yarn, mostly um, Red Heart Super Saver. I'm not sure what the gray is, but let me just drop the camera down a little bit and I'll pull out the yarn and the hooks and show you what I used. Basically did this with some scrap yarn. I add some of this gray acrylic yarn. It is a medium for worsted weight yarn. I'm not really sure of the brand of it. It could be a Super Saver, Red Heart Super Saver. I'm not really sure, but I'm sure you could use Red Heart Super Saver. Um, I did use Red Heart Super Saver for the red. Here's a little bit of it. It's uh, like the color cherry red, and I used Red Heart Super Saver for the black. Again, these were just scraps that I had left over that I used. Um, you're going to want about 30 yards, 30 to 40, maybe 50 yards total of yarn to make one of these. I used a G hook, 4.0 millimeter hook. You're going to possibly want a stitch marker, especially if you have trouble working in the round and knowing where your end round starts and where it ends. A yarn needle and a pair of scissors. So once you have all your supplies together, let's get started making a lightsaber freeze pop cozy. To start the lightsaber popsicle cozy, we're going to start with a magic ring technique. If you're unfamiliar with this technique or it's just not something that you like to do, you can start with a chain two and place your place round one into the second chain from hook. How I do my magic ring is I place the yarn over my first two fingers, wrap it around to form an X on the back of my fingers. Take your hook, place it under that bottom strand, turn, grab the top strand, pull it through, twist, grab that yarn that you're working with your working yarn and pull it through and chain stitch. Now you're ready to start round one. We're going to do eight half double crochets into the magic ring. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now once we have our eight sing, uh, half double crochets, we're going to grab that tail and cinch up the magic ring and we're going to slip stitch into that first half double crochet that we made. If you're not sure where that first one is, just count back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And go ahead and slip stitch right into that. Make sure you grab your working yarn, not your tail. And you're going to want to make your slip stitch fairly snug because we want to try to hide the seam as much as possible. So we're going to chain just one and to start round two we're going to go ahead and place two half double crochets right back into that same stitch that we just slip stitched into. Now if you have trouble finding that first stitch, you can go ahead and put a stitch marker in there. It's up to you. And we're going to continue placing two half double crochets into each stitch all the way around till you get back to the beginning. I will meet back up with you at the end of the round. I've made it all the way back around. We now have 16 stitches. We're at the end of round two. We're going to slip stitch into that first half double crochet that we made. For round three, we're going to be working in our back loops only. 
if you're unfamiliar with your front loops and your back loops, when you're looking at the top of your stitches, these are your front loops, or excuse me, these are your back loops, I apologize. These right here are your back loops, the ones that are away from you, and these are your front loops right here. So we are going to work in our back loops for this round. So to start round three, we're going to chain one and we're going to find that back loop of that stitch that we just slip stitched into. So we're going to work a half double crochet so we need to yarn over and we're going to insert into that back loop without splitting our yarn because it's going to be a little tight to get in there. There we go. So we're into our back loop only. Yarn over, pull through, and complete our half double crochet. We're going to work one half double crochet into each of the back loops. So just work one half double crochet into each stitch into the back loop only. And it's going to leave this nice little ridge right there. I'll meet back up with you at the end of the round. At the end of round three, we still have 16 stitches and we're going to slip stitch to the top of the first half double crochet that we made. Again, we're going to kind of tighten that down a little bit, trying to hide the seam as much as possible. For round four, we're going to chain one and we're going to do one half double crochet into each stitch all the way around. We're going to do that for rounds four and five. At the end of round five, we're going to be changing colors. So we're going to start with going right back into that same stitch that we just slip stitched into and making a half double crochet and one half double crochet into each stitch all the way around. So please repeat this for rounds four and five. I'll meet back up with you at the end of round five where we're going to change colors. At the end of round five, we still have 16 stitches. We're going to change colors. We're going to be bringing in black. So let's start the slip stitch. We're going to enter that stitch to slip stitch. We're going to drop our gray and we're going to bring up black. I usually like to tie off, tie my colors together. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Put a little knot so that they don't pull apart. Make sure you keep your gray attached because you're going to be pulling, you're going to be using that again. You can work over the top of your black or you can weave it in later. I'm going to go ahead and chain up one. This round we're going to be working what's called a back post half double crochet. So you're going to yarn over your hook and you're going to bring the hook inside, come out through in front of the post, go in around the post, come out the back, yarn over, pull through, yarn over again, and complete the half double crochet. I'll show that to you again. Yarn over, go into the back, around the post, pull up your loop, yarn over, and complete the half double crochet. Again, around the post, pull up a loop, yarn over, and complete your half double crochet.
continue working the back post half double crochet stitch all the way around to get back to the beginning and I will meet back up with you at the end of the round. I'm at the end of round six. We have 16 stitches still. We're going to slip stitch into that first half double crochet that we made, but we're going to drop our black and we're going to pull up our gray. Chain one and we're going to ready to start round seven. We're going to half double crochet back into that same stitch that we just slip stitched into and one half double crochet into each stitch around. Continue working one half double crochet into each stitch all the way around to get back to the beginning and I'll meet back up with you at the end of the round. I'm at the end of round seven and we still have 16 half double crochets. Go ahead and slip stitch into that first half double crochet that we made. Now for rounds eight through 16 are going to be exactly the same, just one half double crochet in each stitch. When we get to the end of round 16, we're going to change back to our black color. I did snip off my black yarn and we're going to weave that end in later. Or you could weave it in now before you continue on. It's really up to you. So for rounds 8 through 16, one half double crochet in each stitch. I will meet back up with you at the end of round 16. I'm at the end of round 16. We still have 16 stitches or 16 half double crochets. We're going to slip stitch into that first half double crochet we made and we're going to be changing to our black. So let's pull up the black. We're just going to drop the gray again like we did before and chain one. And this is going to be another back post half double crochet round. So yarn over the hook, insert into the stitch around the post, come out to the back, pull up the loop, yarn over and complete the stitch. Again, yarn over the hook, around the post coming from the back. Whoops, there we go. Don't complete the stitch yet. There we go. Yarn over, pull through all three. There we go. Going to continue doing back post half double crochets all the way around again to get back to the beginning. And I'll meet back up with you at the end of the round. I'm at the end of round 17. We're going to go ahead and slip stitch to that first back post half double crochet that we made. We're going to switch back to our gray. Oops, let's try that again. There we go. And I went ahead and snipped off our black. We're going to do one more round, which is round 18, and half double crochet back into that same stitch that we just slip stitched into, and one half double crochet into each stitch around. I will meet back up with you at the end of the round. I'm at the end of round 18. We still have 16 stitches. Now you can go ahead and slip stitch to this first single crochet or you can try to do the invisible uh, slip stitch or the invisible finish. 
and that's where you pull straight out and you create the false stitch over that first stitch. I'm going to try to demonstrate that for you. It can be a little tricky on such a small piece to try to demonstrate, but I'll do my best here to demonstrate that for you. See how I like to do it is going over that top of that first stitch right there. You insert your hook. Let me see, maybe I think it's easier to do it this way. You insert your yarn through the second stitch from the last. So here's your first stitch into your second stitch because then you're going to create this false stitch over the top. You go back into the same stitch right here that you just came out of to create that false stitch over the top and then you're going to weave it in. I like to weave it in going back towards the same stitch that you're creating create towards that false stitch like that. And you're going to want to go back and forth a couple of times again just like you would any other type of finishing to make sure it doesn't come loose. You just don't want to pull on it too tight so it puckers the stitch and then it kind of loses the effect of being invisible or continuous, however you want to word that. Just like that. So let me go ahead and snip off this tail. And open it up. So it kind of hides where you started and where you stopped. I mean, if you look real hard, you could probably spot it, but it hides it a little bit better. You still have a, you could still sort of see, especially like up in here when you changed your colors, you can still sort of see your seam, but using the one, using a chain one versus a chain two kind of hides it a little bit more. So here is our lightsaber handle, and now we just have to do the button part. I'll be right back. Make sure you turn your piece inside out, weave in all your ends, and I'll be back to do the button. Okay, to start our button, again we're going to use a magic ring. The same thing, you can use a chain two and go second chain from hook to start that first round. But we're going to go ahead and use that same technique to do the magic ring as I did in the beginning. And this time instead of doing half double crochet, we're going to do single crochet. So we're going to place six single crochet into the magic ring. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and six. Go ahead and close up that magic ring. And we're going to slip stitch. So let's count back. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Grab that pull through and through. Chain one, and we're going to put two single crochets right back into that same stitch that we just slip stitched into, and two single crochets into each stitch around. OK, 
continue working two single crochets into each stitch till we get back to the beginning and I'll meet back up with you at the end of the round. I'm at the end of round two, we have 12 stitches and you can go ahead and slip stitch to that first single crochet we made or we can go ahead and do that same technique as we did on the top of the handle co uh, cozy. We can pull up straight out and we're going to go ahead and create another false stitch to do on this button. Make sure you leave a nice long tail this time because we're going to need that to weave in, to weave in, excuse me, to sew the button to the top to the cozy. So we're going to go ahead and go into that second stitch and create the false stitch over the top of the first stitch. That way it keeps our stitch count correct. And I'm going to go ahead and start weaving this in, go back over it, just like that, to pull it in and make it look continuous. Since this is a flat piece, it's a little bit easier to weave in our end. We're also going to use this same tail here to sew the button down. And let's use this short tail here to sew the magic ring down. So we're going to switch over to this one. And just go across that magic ring like so. Just back and forth a couple times. And then we can snip this one off. Rethread our needle up with the longer one. Get our cozy. And decide which side we're going to sew it on. That has a there. I think we're going to sew it onto this. I think this side looks nicer. So we're just going to put it right in the center. You might want to go ahead and you can either pin this down or hold it down with your finger, but you're going to want to make sure you're not going all the way through to the other side of the cozy when you're sewing this down. So just go and make some stitches to sew this onto your cozy. I kind of just do like kind of like a back stitching. Go in and then go back out. Of course, not around the cozy like that. That won't work. Just like that. And go back up through the cozy. And back down. And do that all the way around till you have your cozy sewn. Till you have your button sewn onto the cozy. I will continue sewing this on and I'll meet back up with you. And here is our final cozy with a freeze pop. So all together, sure to please the youngest Jedi in your family. So if you've liked this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and don't forget to ring that bell so you won't miss any of my tutorials. Thanks for watching and happy crocheting! Bye-bye.